This is the Raw of the Dead podcast with your host, Raw of the Dead. Hey guys, I am happy to announce that we have a sponsor for today's episode, and that is Happy Haunts. If you are into the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, then look no further than Happy Haunts Clothing, your go-to for all Haunted Mansion-inspired alternative fashion. So whether you're a fan of the dark side of Disney or just love a ghostly good time, their unique apparel will make sure you're the best dressed ghost at any Haunted Mansion. So be sure to follow them on Instagram at Happy Haunts Clothing for all the latest drops. Don't miss your chance to awaken the spirits. Visit their website, happyhaunts.com today. All right, guys. So we have Ariella from The Pretty Cult. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, we're going to explain where we're at right now in a second because we're going to talk about this place. But what is yes. this place called? We are at Vulture Culture Oddities in Burbank. In Burbank. This is a awesome place so we thought we'd do the podcast here because it has a cool vibe and we're going to talk about why we're here later on in the podcast yeah. but first of all i wanted to uh, thank you for doing the podcast i know we talked about it um probably in the very beginning of me starting the podcast yeah uh because i had a i had a list of 12 people i wanted to get on there you were one of them oh thanks and i'm still trying to get down that list i'm tackling <laughs> it one at a time so i think i'm on episode since I started the podcast, I think I'm on episode 27 or somewhere around there. And Sick. then on the on the Blackraft Network, this is episode five or six. I can't remember. I can't keep track. But the other episodes all live on, on, on my other channel, which those will be released as well. So, But I want to get a little bit, bit of your background of the Pretty Cult and when it started. What year did it start? Oh, okay. So technically, I think it started in 2012. Um, so I used to work in I had a day job in music. Um, I worked in music touring. That's actually what I went to school for. I didn't uh, study fashion at all. And um, I was doing it just strictly as a hobby um, for fun, just doing like events here and there. I would like sew and make everything um, while I would have my day job. And then I'd kind of work it on the weekends and at mm -hmm. night. And then I eventually decided to leave music, not leave music, but leave the agency world. Um, I just decided it wasn't for me. And I was like, you know, Pretty Cult had been growing. And I was like, maybe I should give this a try. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's just see. And I have never had a day job since. Um, so when it really became my full-time thing, I would say is 2020. Um, a out of necessity you know before that I would always be doing like I've been a stylist assistant I've done a lot of different stuff to just make ends meet when you're hustling and being an artist right mm -hmm. uh, you have 500 side things you do <laughs> yeah exactly and then in 2020 obviously couldn't do that anymore and I was like okay this is like do or die time like I need to figure this out because I don't have a choice. Like yeah. I can't vend, I can't do events, like online is it. I need to figure out, you know, solid like social media strategy. And, you know, we were growing, but then was when I, I was like, I literally can't do anything else. So like failure is not an option. Mm -hmm. And I just threw everything I could into it, taught myself some of my own photography because I couldn't work with anyone in the beginning of 2020. Um, and then just really grew it from there and then, you know, started um, touring and doing everything that it is now. What were you doing at the, uh, you, you were working at a music agency and what were you doing there? Uh, I was uh, an assistant to an agent and I, we booked um, tours. So some of uh, the clients we worked on were like John Carpenter, Chelsea Wolf, um, a lot of cool um, like French pop artists. Mm -hmm. And I was in charge of... Um, day-to-day -day touring um it, it was definitely in the like the live music spectrum yeah. of music and you went to school for that yeah i have a degree in music business oh wow okay what school did you go to uh i went to a trade school i went to musicians institute oh okay that's yeah. cool yeah did the trade school program um got an internship and from there was offered two weeks before i graduated a job on my top pick uh agent's desk and i was there for wow. about five years Wow, that's cool. That's yeah. kind of I didn't I didn't I didn't know you did that. So, how 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 did you like that? How did you like doing that? 
At first, I loved it. Um, I still love my passion, first and foremost, will always be music. Um, I loved it. You know, I wanted to be an agent. That's what I wanted to do. Um, yeah. The person I worked for for the majority of the time um, was a lovely human. It was nothing against him. Um, it just got to the point where it was very corporate and there was definite um, being a woman uh, was passed up many a times for uh, promotions and things like that. Uh, yeah, you ass- felt it. You yeah, felt assistants it. like, and who were great too, but it just, you know, they, you know, were male and seemed to be getting farther. And I finally just got over it working for the man literally yeah. and pff, making no money. <laughs> yeah. um, and I just was like, you know what? I've always been an entrepreneur, even when I was a kid. I learned uh, to start sewing when I was like 10 and I would like make random things and like try and sell them to like stores in my small town where I grew up. Uh, That's kind of cool. Yeah. I've always been entrepreneurial, like uh, wanting to make my own money and run my own business. And um, yeah, so I think it just kind of came naturally. And I also was just, I wanted to be in control. I'm an extremely independent person and I also want to be in control of my own finances in a way, you know, making my own money and stuff like that. And yeah, not furthering someone else's career and agenda. I just wanted to put all that energy like into my own stuff and my own artwork and designs and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you were, when you were a kid, were you into spooky stuff and Halloween and, and dark would, stuff? So a bit, I grew up in a very religious home, so that's was very much not allowed. Um, I, did get to on um, all of my friends did not get to watch Harry Potter, but I did. So that was a really big win for me. Yeah. And um, I even make uh, jokes with my mom now. I was like, that's when like witchcraft was planted in me. <laughs> I knew I was going to be a witch. It was Harry Potter's fault. Um, and then I definitely went through like I was a massive Avril Lavigne fan. So I had a whole like punk phase, which yeah. my mom actually let me kind of dress and all that stuff, which I was very surprised. Um, but not, I did like Halloween and stuff, but not as much into it as I am now. It just wasn't something that was really, um, allowed in my house. Yeah. So well, your family, what kind of, what kind of religion and are they still religious? Uh, yeah, my, uh, mom is, um, she's non-denominational Christian. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is, uh, are they okay with what you're doing? Yeah, my parents are um, very supportive of my business. Um, they are also business owners, so I think they are they like that I'm an entrepreneur. Um, my mom has some of my clothing. She's just like, nothing with tarot, but anything else, <laughs> like I'll wear if it's black. Um, so they definitely um, try in their own way, and I think now that they have seen um, that I'm succeeding and – People yeah. actually care about it and it's not it's not a phase yeah um, yeah that's important they, sometimes, sometimes they try they think their that. best they yeah. try their best for sure yeah i think sometimes early on they think that you're going through a phase like my mom thought i was going through a, a heavy metal phase yeah and she, i think she still thinks that so but i'll, I'll let her i'll let her think that <laughs> yeah, I'll still let her think that, <laughs> and then the name the pretty cult uh, where did you come up with that name so oh gosh i The idea behind it is I wanted some people to feel empowered. Whoever you are, you can be a part of this cult, right? Like I wanted you to feel pretty or beautiful or whatever that those words mean to you and like a part of something. And I think, again, that was early on when I was leaving the church and finding witchcraft and finding that worked for me. And I finally felt like I was a part of something that felt right for me. And then the other side of it is, again, my love for music blue oyster cult so i was like kind of playing with that and i remember i was like literally sitting with like i think my sister at like a macaroni grill or something and she was like well what about like these couple words and i was like yeah and then my mom was the one i think who said oh like blue oyster cult and i was like yeah i love them like anything rock and then the pretty cult was born yeah interesting that's that's kind of (laughs) cool i like it yeah because a lot of a lot of like uh there is like the word cult in some brands or yeah. even some bands even. Um, I always thought it was more like uh, like sort of uh, the cult, like the band. Yeah, also a you band, I mean? the yeah, cult. Yeah. Also, I think the cult, the word cult is a little 
also cheeky and like f you in a sense to like religion so there is like that yeah. aspect of it mm. um but yeah and also i just wanted people to feel like the ethos and the lifestyle of the brand being part of the alternative lifestyle whatever that is to yeah. you and being able to feel welcome no matter who you are and to be a part of it and we strive very hard within the brand to have something for everyone as as much as we're able to and on, on your uh, pretty cult is it would you are you is it more like a lifestyle uh brand where you're where you're providing like accessories um yeah we have everything from homeware accessories uh clothing um i'm constantly expanding i have so many ideas up here of things <laughs> yeah. i want to do and make that in time, hopefully, we are able to release. But yeah, I definitely want it to be where we hopefully have something, no matter what it is that you're looking for. Yeah. Whether do you guys have shoes or I no? I don't yet. Okay. That's one thing I haven't dived into. I'm a little hesitant because I'm just like that it's, seems like a lot of stock because of sizing. Yeah, it, it is. So, I, I worked with it, so I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with the shoes, so. I, Maybe someday. Not gonna say no, never. Yeah. But just not right now. And do you have like a, where do you where do you have all your stuff? So at right now? um, uh, we're based out of Glendale, um, and I have an office there, which also has like a uh, we converted to have like a warehouse portion, and oh, then I perfect. have an office, and then there's like a not, my assistant has an office and like a shipping area. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So you have some employees there. Yeah. Okay. My assistant's full time, and then we have um, our in house photographer. And that's the other thing. We converted half my office to be like crazy pretty and all these plants and everything so that way yeah. we always had a place to film TikToks. No, that's perfect. I think it's uh, if you're if you're, you have a brand, you want that space to have like something for your content, for your photography. Does Maya do your photography over she there? She does. Shout okay, out to yeah. Maya. Yes. She's awesome. I had her on the podcast as well. She was great to yeah, talk to. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, she's great. But that's cool. So, uh, and how long has that warehouse been there? Is it in 2020 as well? No, I got that. I think September will be two years. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was working out of my, like, when I say pretty cool, like, I'm super DIY. So I wait till the last minute to, like, expand something. Uh, we yeah. were working out of my house, my garage, and I had a storage unit up until 20, September of 2022. Yeah. And then I finally was like, okay, we need something bigger. We need our own space. I'm so ready to get this out of my house. Um, I know. It's probably, it's probably a lot, and it just builds. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was taking over the garage, <laughs> and then we had to get a storage unit just for the product, and then we would go yeah. there and pull orders and then go back. It was just... I'll, I would never change it for the world because it makes me appreciate what I have now, but you saw that you saw the growth. Yeah, and that's that's the important part. Cause I'm very cautious when I do things. I don't. I am a risk taker, for sure. But I, when it comes to growth stuff like that, I'm very cautious because I never want to like jump into something. I just want to wait till it's a hundred percent time. Yeah. and I always remind myself like. You know, we all fall into the trap of like comparing sometimes ourselves to other people. And I'm like, you know what? Like my time will come mm -hmm. and I want to be smart about this and I want to be methodical and I don't, I want to earn it and I don't want to regret doing anything, you know? Yeah. I also feel like you're, like you're, you're the stuff you have, the tarot stuff. It's like one of the first ones that I've seen as far as a brand that really mm -hmm. like kind of like uh, has that niche where you're where you can kind of see you it's a pretty cool especially with the flannels yeah how long have you had the flannels for? since 2012 that's one of the first wow. items i started doing they used okay. to be all like vintage upcycled flannel um that's a pretty cult started on like when i was in college it was like upcycled stuff um and it was flannel and then i would get like tarot patches and sew them on and then i finally was like why am i doing like Rider weight tarot when I could just make my own and print yeah. it and put it on there, you know. Um, and then I started kind of dabbling in that. Um, yeah, I obviously I'm not claiming I didn't invent tarot by any means. No, no, but I'm not we that, definitely but, like I feel like we're one of the first brands to really start doing tarot apparel. Yeah, I um, feel and that like too. doing the flannel and then the t-shirts. 
Um, it's cool that it's a thing now. Like tarot art is really cool and beautiful and different art resonates with different people. So like, of course, no shade to like anyone who has tarot stuff. It's cool. Um, but it was kind of cool to kind of see, like to be the first on that. And then now it's like a trend and like more people are into it and stuff, which is cool. I mean, I have tarot stuff from other brands, you know, yeah. it's artwork that resonates with me. I have no problem. Yeah. And then you, do you design all the stuff yourself? Yeah, I do all the artwork and then I do all the clothing design as well. Oh, okay. Is it just you doing this? It's me. And then, um, shout out to Jesse, my most amazing assistant in the whole wide world. Is that the one I met at Midsummer or no? Yes. She okay. was working with me at Midsummer. Um, that's when I think I first met you. Yeah. I, I was like, it's, I know one of you. I don't know who it was. <laughs> I, I, we were only emailing at the time and I was like, yes, I do remember meet. you, uh, you had a booth that you were doing photography Midsummer, right? Yeah. I'm doing, yeah. I was doing the photo booth at the hollow shadows. That's right. Yeah. Yes. That is the first time we met. Um, yes, Jessie is my assistant and she, she helps, she keeps pretty cult running. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I think it's important. You need somebody that you can, that can help you with it. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. doing it by yourself, it's like. I find out with most of the brands, they, there's always like a second or third person that's actually helping them with. For a with long other time, stuff. I didn't. It was just me, and then I finally got to the point where Jesse started very part time, and then within a year, I think she went from two days to like four days within a year and a half, oh, um, wow. because there was just more things, more things, more things, and now she's pretty much uh, full time, and she does events with me and tours. Today's sponsor is a movie I actually directed called Poe. Poe is a thrilling short film that brings to life the story of a doll who comes to life in human form. Set against the backdrop of 19th century America, the movie serves as an origin story delving into how Poe came to be and her intriguing encounter with the legendary dark poet Edgar Allan Poe. And now you can own this captivating film on DVD by visiting our website at rawlofthedeadphotography.com. The movie stars Jen Phoenix, Sean Boyle, and Ash Briscoe. So don't miss out on this unique opportunity to add Poe to your DVD collection. And stuff like that. Yeah, I wanted to get into the, the tours. How, how yeah. did you... So you do a lot of the tours with the, um, the Danny Wimmer ones. Yeah. And then... Is there other ones you jump on as well? Um, so I've done quite a few. I've done, uh, I did Sad Summer, um, I think in 2022. Um, I did all of Sad Summer. I've done, yeah, a handful of the Danny Wimmers. And then we just announced this year we're going to be, actually our only festival of the year, we're going to do Mayhem. Oh, Mayhem, yes. Yeah, that's, excited for that I one. I know the person that's doing that one. Hell yeah. So that's, that's all. I'm glad they brought it back. Yeah, I, that's an old older festival. I've never been to it, but me neither. But I've it's, heard it's funny. Uh, Maya, our in-house photographer, she was like, "Dude, I grew up going to Mayhem in Albuquerque, yeah. where she's from." <laughs> she was like, "I was so that was my thing," and I was like, "All right, well, <laughs> now you're gonna be working it." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And at Mayhem, I, so is that just a one-time show, or is it? Like, I, I didn't really. Read um, that much about they're it. doing a day festival in October, um, and then there might be. Ta I'm sure they're going to try and do something more extensive, maybe a tour or something next year. Oh, okay, yeah, I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's great. We need to have um, other other rock festivals out there that yeah. are all under one name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then how did you get on those tours? Did you just, uh, did you have connections from your music? Yeah. So side? someone I, uh, that used to work at DWP uh, knew me from the agency world. And um, he actually saw me vending warp tour at the at the last show they did um, when they did like an East Coast, West Coast date. Okay. And he came up to me, said hi. And he was like, would you ever want to like do Aftershock? And I was like, absolutely. And um, that was in 2019. And then, um, or no. 2018 we've ended in 2019 obviously 2020 yeah didn't happen and then we've done um the last handful but um yeah we won't be there this year but we'll be at mayhem which is the same weekend yeah that's gonna be awesome yeah so in 2020 uh when you started the business was it right during the pandemic yeah. Like when you started doing it full time. Yeah. Like um, a bunch of stuff that I was doing for side work was obviously gone. Events were gone. Everything was gone. I had an online store, but it was something that hadn't, I hadn't put a lot of time and effort into. Yeah. Um, just wasn't something I was focused on. 
And then basically I was like, well, I have all this time. And um, actually I also, because I could sew, I started making masks. That's really how. Um, I noticed a lot of people did that mm-hmm. too. I was like, you know what? There's a big need. How do I feel, f- fill it? And um, yeah, I started making masks and I feel like that helped like build the online and got yeah. people like following and subscribing and stuff like that. And then, um, yeah, just did what I could and thank God it worked. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it just, everyone I think scraped by that one. I would say it was a good year, but I yeah. think after six months people started kind of like getting tired of it and just wanted to go out again. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was a tough year. So what I've noticed, uh, cause you were, you mentioned something about 2012 is kind of when you really started the side business. Mm-hmm. And I was telling uh, Bobby from black Crap the same thing that I've noticed with a lot of people I've talked to 2012, seemed like a lot of people started their business interesting uh love painting the stitches black craft me i started raw that of photography 2012 wow um if not 2020 it's a lot as another year where people started <laughs> yeah. when they when they started to like maybe and that was me as well because in 2020 i didn't want to i didn't want to go back to my normal job after yeah. being furloughed and i wanted to do my photography somewhere and offer it so so when i went to blackcraft that's kind of was my focus was to do that and try to get into that department try to get into the what what i want to do yeah and so i feel like talking to all these entrepreneurs especially here in the goth in um in the goth world i feel like everybody's kind of started in that same it's it's a it's a it must have been a magical year in 2012 yeah and then 2020 just the way it kind of like picked up and people figured it out that they don't want to work for people anymore and kind of want to take a chance. It's a time for you to take a chance. I feel like. Yeah. And I'm really big on like the universe teaching me lessons. And I feel like for many of us, that was like a lesson, right? It was like you either figure something out or you can't pay rent, you know, like that was a lot of choice for a lot of people. And, um, I think a lot of us were like, all right, let's do or die. (laughs) You know, like let's, let's go. And that's what I said. I I've always been one like, I do take challenges head on and I always tell myself like this sucks, but I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. I'll Mm -hmm. figure it out. And that was one of those where I was like, I can't go get another job. Mm -hmm. I don't want another job. I've been working at this and I'm not going to let this pandemic like run my business. Yeah, exactly. You know, so I'm like, well, I have all the time in the world now because I'm stuck at home. So I better figure it out. Yep. You can figure out uh, what you want to do. Put your designs out. It actually gives you more time to kind of like, dive into that a little bit more i think that's that's kind of the lesson and not that it was a good thing but i think i that's the good things i took out of it as yeah. well so i was able to learn more skills learn more video skills like even just just recording stuff like this yeah i didn't know how to re- record anything prior to 2020 except for maybe a little bit mm-hmm. but i had a few months to figure it out and i figured out again, within two months i go okay and i know what everything does now yeah and we can go from there so uh, let's talk about the, the the event that's happening here at this yeah. shop. So what's going on for the, this is on June 28th. Yes. Um, so actually funny about 2020 is actually when I uh, started the Witch Oracle, um, Witch Archetype Oracle deck is when I kind of conceived the idea and it was something I hadn't seen. Um, and I started working on the designs then, and I had actually released a couple. It was before I had decided to make it like an entire deck. Um, and then it went on a little bit of a hiatus. I decided, okay, I want to make a deck. Um, not going to release anything else. Mm -hmm. Uh, designed 20 cards, wrote a guidebook, um, did the whole thing. That was like a first for me having to like write something. So that took me a minute, but, um, yeah, so we are releasing the Witch Oracle, um, Witch Archetype Oracle deck here at oh, that's uh, awesome. Vulture that's Culture. Yes, this is the deck right This is the here. deck. Let's do a close up. Let's do a close up on that camera right there. <laughs> <laughs> She's so pretty. That looks great. So we're doing um it's currently up for pre order, um, and we're doing a release party for it here at Vulture Culture. We're gonna have um a couple readers uh, doing free oracle decks with the or for 
free Oracle readings yeah. with the deck. Uh, we are going to have Julio the Monster doing um, flash tattoos. I love Julio. Yeah. I'm trying I, to get him on the podcast. Yeah. As well. <laughs> um, his work is really awesome. I know all the pretty cult roles are really stoked. They're like, oh, we're going to get a tattoo. Yeah. Um, we're going to have a photo booth that um, we kind of worked on with Vulture Culture um, because, as you can tell by the store, they're amazing with like setups great, and props yeah. and things like that. So they're going to build out a photo booth. Uh, Maya will be doing photography for everyone, food, drinks, um, nice. and we will have some goodie bags and things like that. And I think it's just going to be a really fun, really that's cool awesome. networking event. Yeah, that's cool. And that's going to be here in Burbank on June. What's what's the hours for that? Uh, it starts at 7 and we'll probably go to like midnight. There's no like hard off, but it does start at 7 p.m. Okay. That should be cool. And then that's when you can get those cards. Yes. And that'll be the day that um, these will be here available. And then also our online pre-orders will begin shipping that day. Uh, I also made a uh, coloring book to uh, oh, nice. join this. Yeah, I thought it was r would be fun, like the illus the way the artwork is done. I just was like, this would be a cool coloring book. So all the pre-orders get a free coloring book right now. And then after the 28th, the coloring book will just be available on its own. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And then you can also get some Pretty Cult merch here at this store. Yes. If you want to shop Pretty Cult um, in person, the only place you can do that in L.A. is here at Vulture Culture. Um, Pretty Cult obviously does not have a brick and mortar. And uh, we have an exclusivity with Vulture Culture. And they have a bunch of our designs, um, everything from T-shirts, flannel, accessories. They have our sunglasses. Yeah. They have tons of stuff. Um, so if you want to try anything on, see it in person, you can come in here five days a week i actually gotta grab something on my way out too so because <laughs> i meant to get something at the oddity show when i saw you there yeah and when i walked away i was like oh i meant to get a, like a shirt from from you and i was like totally forgot and i go i'll no, catch you to get you a time. lucifer oracle shirt that, that would be perfect i feel like that's the one for you okay you know me well <laughs> i have a little baphomet uh um what's it called a car uh like an air freshener air freshener in the car right now that I just threw in see? i'm like see i love my baphomet i just call him baffy baffy Hey, Baffy. I want to make actually like a, like a little skit with a Baphomet. I think that'd be, kind of, that'd be kind of funny and just do like something, something funny with him. Like, like he's working or having him do, like having him be my assistant or something. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. I think that'd be kind of funny. Oh my God. Yeah, your PA for like all your photo shoots is Baffy. It's Baffy. Hey, Baffy, yeah. get over here. Come yeah. here. What did I Baffy, tell you about these lights? <laughs> Unplug it first before you turn it off. <laughs> Come on, Baffy. Get, get back. I'm not paying you today. <laughs> Um, I want to talk to you also about like the, um, when you, the, one of the tours that you did, yeah. there was like a, I forgot which one it was, which show it was, but it was the one that I know because Blackcraft was there too, was the one we got. This might have been your worst. I wanted to find out about what the disaster. But I think I know this which might one be. you're going to ask. <laughs> I, but I think it's that one. Where was it at? Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Blue Ridge. So that one, I was going to tell you what does that, what are your biggest photo, uh, not photo disasters, I'm sorry, uh, uh, event disasters. Yeah, Blue Ridge takes the cake on that okay. one for sure. I figured, I figured. Uh, we had another one before that that I thought was going to was gonna be the worst, but uh, Blue Ridge just blew it out of the park. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know Blackcraft was out there. Uh, I mean, a bunch of my uh, vendor, like uh, mm -hmm. business friends were there and all of us. Uh, you were at that one though. I was there. Okay. I was physically. Um, what happened? What what exactly happened? <laughs> there were so many things. Um, at least from our experience, a hurricane level storm blew in, and mm. it blew in so fast that we had no notice. Um, and the the head no shade at all to the head of sponsors. Of course, she not. was trying to help us as much as she could, but the I don't believe the festival was assisting her at all mm -hmm. and um she was trying to get us information and no one was giving her information so of course trickle down right so she was not able to let us know and uh, basically a hurricane level came in uh, my tent i had a two tents with a back of house mm -hmm. and uh one of my tents just completely blew over to the point where Wow. I thankfully, I was holding onto it with one arm because it was about a clear into the next uh, row of vendors and into like the audience. Wow. Would have 
God knows, taken someone out. Yeah. And I'm holding on and thankfully a bunch of festival goers, like dudes ran over and like saw me and like flipped it over. But of course that had busted the tent. Oh, so geez. for the next at least 30 to 40 minutes, myself, my team, uh, because the way the logistics of that festival were a nightmare and our staff parking was like l not oh, exaggeration, 20 to 25 minute walk. And I did not feel safe to have all of us basically in hurricane level open field trying to get to our vehicles. So I was like the best place to be. Let's just stay under here. Um, we're the smallest thing, you know, lightning. Luckily mm -hmm. there's stages. It'll get that before it gets us. And we had to hold, um, our tent down and I was, I mean, the one tent was broken and it in turn broke our back of house as well. Um, yeah. It wasn't as in poor of a condition, but hurricane level rain was just pouring in. Luckily, um, festival goers came over and helped. And also, you know, we're, I was like, you guys can shelter under here. Uh, just if you could please help us like hold because it's wind. I mean, yeah. like, I was literally That's outside insane. in the middle of a hurricane. It was the most insane thing I've ever lived through. And um, yeah, I just stood there and I was like, me and my team are safe. I'm watching the majority of my livelihood get rained on, but yeah, this your too merch, shall pass. This too shall pass. Ex yeah, the merch got just completely... Yeah, we were sucked. able to salvage some. So I was insane. The next uh, day... Uh, Maya was actually at the hotel using the hotel laundry to try and just dry things. Yeah. Um, Jesse and I were at, at the festival trying to salvage and move things. And luckily the next day we were able to sell and people were really kind and were like, if it's a little damp, whatever, we don't care. We'll take it. You know, like people were being really kind. You can really just kind. wash it. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. Like luckily it. my stuff is clothing. Uh, but at the same time, like some people were like, we had a TikTok go viral, which was great. And we ran a sale, but some people were like, it's closed. Just three sell it. And I'm like, no, for sure. But also like, I can't do that online. Like imagine if you got a shirt that had been clearly dried and it was all like some of our stuff, like, because it was rainwater too, it mm -hmm. was not like, it, it wasn't like, if you laundered it, it would be fine. But yeah, it was just a mess. Thankfully, a lot of things were salvaged. We put things on sale and people took the damaged stuff, which was cool. And yeah. people were being really understanding because just there was a sense of community between the workers and also the festival goers that were like, this is such a shit show. <laughs> like, yeah. we'll just try and make the best of it. Um, and I think, you know, people felt really bad for us. Um, cause you know, we had to, we drove all the way across the country and yeah. then a week or two later I had to be back in Kentucky for louder than life. And you know, when you're still a small business, that stuff really does affect. That's a, it's a, lot. That's a lot to, to go through. Yeah. I was, I would never wish that upon my worst enemy. I have a bug in here. The bugs love me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I saw the stuff that came back from uh, when I was uh, at Blackcraft still, the stuff that came back from Blue Ridge. And it was just insane. Like how, I don't think people understand when it gets, when merch gets damaged and you actually lay it out, it just does not look good. It doesn't. You we can't, had, there you was a couple designs it. particularly that had contained um, a lot of ink. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's not like, oh, I threw it. Uh, if I throw something in the wash and the dryer, it'll be fine. But like you're dealing with rainwater. And, you know, our shirts were, some of our shirts at that time were like poly bagged. And you would think that would help, but they still have little holes for like yeah. ventilation. And the water's just sitting in there, you mm -hmm. know, not being able to dry out. So like that, I'm the next Getting day. Mold. Yeah. Yeah. I was in the back literally just opening up hundreds of shirts mm -hmm. so they could like try and air out. It was, yeah, it was. It's a nightmare. <laughs> it was for a time. Sure. I've never lived through something so horrendous. Yeah, no, that sounds horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen again. But these hurric yeah. the this is like, is this in Florida or where, what city was Vir this in? Uh, it's in Virginia. Virginia, okay. In the middle of, I'm not even kidding, like on the way home, we drove through the Appalachian Mountains. It's like in the middle of nowhere. Wow, okay. Yeah. Like our hotel was like 40 minutes away. <laughs> So it's not nearby. No. <laughs> yeah. No. And that's a true 40 minutes. True 40 minutes. Yeah. Because over here, 40 minutes could be like. Five miles. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. But to actually, because I, when I went to Arizona, like I was like about 35 minutes away from where my mom was. And it's a true 35 minutes. I'm like, this is actually like an L, like I'm in LA and, and probably like where I live in Covina, that's the distance yeah. of, of Arizona where I was staying. So I'm like, oh, this is a, it's different because over here you, you time it differently, but it could take you 40 minutes just to get down the street. That's not even that far. Yeah. So. Well, and um, being a, a business owner, what are some of the, uh, the, what is the biggest challenge you've learned that you've overcome and you're still learning as, as being an, being a, being an entrepreneur? Oh man, I feel like I learn a, le- a new lesson every week to every <laughs> day sometimes. But what are some, like, what are some challenges that people might not know about that thinking about getting into into some type of business like brands or whatever yeah. it is it, i mean it's not the sexiest but i'm gonna be honest like don't bite off more than you can chew like i said about not um getting my office until two years ago yeah you know it, it's hard the best advice i could say is like stay diy as possible for as long as you can Mm. save your money, really learn your craft, learn all aspects of your business. If I had to do my own photography, I could do it. Would it be as amazing as you or Maya could do? Absolutely not. But if I had to, we went in another lockdown and Mm. I had to shoot something, I could do it. I could do Photoshop if I need to. Um, Learn every aspect of your business as best as you can because at the end of the day, no one is going to care about your business as much as you. No, and you need to be able to do all aspects if you need to. If you if you lose somebody, if um, something happens and you yep. need to be able to, I would say that's the, it's a challenge for sure. But my biggest word of advice is take the time. Don't automatically, Ugh, I don't want to do this, like hire someone. There will be a point you can get to that point for yeah. sure. I don't do my own taxes anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah, I yeah. hire someone for that. But there was a time like I have always handled everything. And also I feel like having a full understanding and grasp of your business is so important. So you can, when you understand every facet, I feel like it's, it just makes you a better business owner and in turn is going to make your business better. Yeah. When you understand everything and you hone your craft, whatever that is, like I was sewing and screen printing. I'm also a screen printer. I was doing everything myself up until 20, between 2020 and 2021. Um, I officially stopped printing, I think in like 22. Yeah. I just didn't have the time anymore. And I have an awesome printer in Long Beach and they do everything. Um, but again, I mean, there could come a time where things are slow and I need to pick up printing again and I'll do it. You know, you, know? you can do it. And yeah. don't be above anything in your business. Like don't let your ego get in the way. Like at the end of the day, it's your livelihood. It's your thing. We all want to be successful and have all the employees and all the stuff. Like I get it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like no ego. Cause again, no one's going to care about it as much as you. Yeah. I think that's true. I think that's good advice. Yeah. I think the same with me. Like I want to get my own photo studio and everything, but I'm doing a little at a time as well where I'm renting a, a, a monthly like subscription basis studio. So mm-hmm. it's helping me because like if I need to shoot something, I can just go to the studio and do it. But diving right into that, I don't think I could sustain it. Yeah. And right you want to make sure you have the clients that are there. So it, exactly. it makes sense for you to pay that rent. Like your clients are going to help pay that rent, right? Exactly. With all the photo shoots that you book. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally yeah. agree with that. Do you have uh, any other events besides the one here? Coming up. So we are doing um, a lot of oddities expos this year. We um, travel around with them uh, almost all the dates in the U.S. And uh, Pretty Cool will also be at the Australia dates again in December. Um, we're at Providence, Rhode Island this coming weekend. And then we have... So oh, wow. many throughout. Yeah. Jesse. So be you're at leaving, that one. leaving towns. For, I'm um, not. Jesse's going to go do oh, that Jessie, one. Okay, yeah. It. So if you want to go see her, say hi. Um, and then, yeah, we have a bunch, uh, you can find their full schedule. We're at almost all of them. And then as of now, uh, it'll be mayhem. Mayhem, mayhem is our, are you doing midsummer at all? I'm not doing midsummer this year. I think we might have uh, oddities at that, at oh, that okay. weekend, but, uh, yeah, as of now it's, um, just, Oddities Expo and Mayhem. Mayhem is our one big uh, festival we're focusing on this year. I think that's going to be awesome. I can't wait. 
Yeah. Can't wait to see we how have that some, one goes. We have some things planned. We have some things cooking. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. Okay, cool. Well, um, give us your social and your website. Okay, before. everything is at the Pretty Cult, all one word, uh, and our website is theprettycult.com. There you go. Well, thank you, Ariel, for talking to me and thank you for having me taking on. the time. And I'm gonna go check out some of your merch right now and yeah. make sure you guys buy some stuff from Pretty Cult. Yeah. And I appreciate you coming on the show. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye.